The Belgrade Offensive or the Belgrade Strategic Offensive Operation Serbo-Croatian, Biogradska Operacija, Biogradska Operacija Russian, Belgradskaya Strategijskaya Nastupitelna Operacija Belgradskaya Strategijeskaya Nastupitelna Operacija the 14th of September 1944 to the 24th of November 1944 was a military operation in which Belgrade was liberated from the German Wehrmacht through the joint efforts of the Soviet Red Army, Yugoslav Partisans, and the Bulgarian People's Army. Soviet forces and local militias launched separate but loosely cooperative operations that undermined German control of Belgrade and ultimately forced a retreat. Martial planning was coordinated evenly among command leaders, and the operation was largely enabled through tactical cooperation between Josip Tito and Joseph Stalin that began in September 1944. These martial provisions allowed Bulgarian forces to engage in operations throughout Yugoslav territory, which furthered tactical success while increasing diplomatic friction. The primary objectives of the Belgrade Offensive centered on lifting the German occupation of Serbia, seizing Belgrade as a strategic holdout in the Balkans, and severing German communication lines between Greece and Hungary. The spearhead of the offensive was executed by the Soviet 3rd Ukrainian Front in coordination with the Yugoslav 1st Army Group and 14th Army Corps. Simultaneous operations in the south involved the Bulgarian 2nd Army and Yugoslav 13th Army Corps, and the incursion of the 2nd Ukrainian Front northwards from the Yugoslav-Bulgarian border placed additional pressure on German command. There were additional skirmishes between Bulgarian forces and German anti-partisan regiments in Macedonia that represented the campaign's southernmost combat operations. Background Developments in Yugoslavia By the summer of 1944, the Germans had not only lost control of practically all the mountainous area of Yugoslavia but were no longer able to protect their own essential lines of communication. Another general offensive on their front was unthinkable, and by September it was clear that Belgrade and the whole of Serbia must shortly be free of them. These summer months were the best the movement had ever seen, there were more recruits than could be armed or trained, desertions from the enemy reached high numbers, one by one the objectives of resistance were reached and taken. In August 1943, the German Wehrmacht had two army formations deployed in the Balkans, Army Group E in Greece and the 2nd Panzer Army in Yugoslavia and Albania. Army Group F Headquarters General Feldmarschall von Weichs in Belgrade acted as a joint high command for these formations, as well as for Bulgarian and Quisling formations. After the collapse of the uprising in December 1941, anti-Axis activity in Serbia decreased significantly, and the focus of resistance moved to other, less populated areas. Consequently, although Serbia had great significance to the Germans, very few troops actually remained there, according to Schmeider only about 10,000 in June 1944. In the following years, Tito repeatedly tried to reinforce the partisan forces in Serbia with experienced units from Bosnia and Montenegro. From the spring of 1944, the Allied command had assisted in these efforts. The Germans actively opposed these efforts by concentrating forces in the border regions of Bosnia and Montenegro, in order to disturb partisan concentrations, to inflict casualties on partisan units, and to push them back with a series of large-scale assaults. In July 1944, German defenses began to fail. After the failure of Operation Draftganger a 1944 anti-partisan operation in Montenegro, Yugoslavia, and northern Albania, three divisions of the Narodnuslobodilaka Vojska Jugoslavi the People's Liberation Army of Yugoslavia NOVJ managed to cross the Ibar River to the east and threaten the main railroad lines. After the failure of Operation Rubazel in Montenegro in August 1944, two additional NOVJ divisions broke through the German blockade, successfully entrenching themselves in western Serbia. Army Group F Command responded by deploying additional forces. The 1st Mountain Division arrived in Serbia in early August, followed by the 4th SS Panzergrenadier Division from the Thessaloniki area. Developments in Romania in late August 1944 confronted Army Group F Command with the necessity of an immediate large-scale concentration of troops and weapons in Serbia in order to cope with a threat from the east. The Allied Command, and the NOVJ Supreme Command, predicted this scenario and developed a plan for the occasion. 
On 1 September 1944, a general attack from the ground and from the air on the German transport lines and installations Operation Ratweek began. These attacks largely hindered German troop movements, with units disassembled and tied to the ground. In the meantime, the 1st Proletarian Corps, the main partisan formation in Serbia, continued with reinforcing and developing its forces and with seizing positions for the assault on Belgrade. On 18 September Viljeva was taken, and on 20 September Arendelovac. Partisans achieved control of a large area south and southwest of Belgrade, thus forming the basis for the future advance towards Belgrade. In response to the defeat of German forces in the Jassy Kishinev operation in late August 1944, which forced Bulgaria and Romania to switch sides, and to the advance of Red Army troops into the Balkans, Berlin ordered Army Group E to withdraw into Hungary. But the combined actions of Yugoslav partisans and Allied air forces impeded German movements with Ratwick. With the Red Army on Serbia's borders, the Wehrmacht put together another provisional army formation from available elements of Army Group E and the Second Panzer Army for the defense of Serbia, called Army Group Serbia. German, Armibteilung Serbian. Topic. Regional developments As a result of the Bulgarian coup d'état of 1944, the monarchist fascist regime in Bulgaria was overthrown and replaced with a government of the Fatherland Front led by Kimon Georgiev. Once the new government came to power, Bulgaria declared war on Germany. Under the new pro-Soviet government, four Bulgarian armies, 455,000 strong were mobilized and reorganized. In early October 1944, three Bulgarian armies, consisting of around 340,000 men, were located on the Yugoslav Bulgarian border. By the end of September, the Red Army 3rd Ukrainian Front troops under the command of Marshal Fyodor Tolbukhin were concentrated at the Bulgarian Yugoslav border. The Soviet 57th Army was stationed in the Vidin area, while the Bulgarian 2nd Army General Kirill Stanchev commanding under the operational command of the 3rd Ukrainian Front was stationed to the south on the Nys rail line at the junction of the Bulgarian, Yugoslav, and Greek borders. This allowed the arrival of the partisans' 1st Army from Yugoslav territory, in order to provide support to their 13th and 14th Corps collaborating in the liberation of Nys and supporting the 57th Army's advance to Belgrade, respectively. The Red Army 2nd Ukrainian Front's 46th Army was deployed in the area of the Taregova River Romania, poised to cut the rail link between Belgrade and Hungary to the north of Versac. Pre-operations were coordinated between the Soviets and the commander-in-chief of the Yugoslav partisans, Marshal Josip Broz Tito. Tito arrived in Soviet-controlled Romania on 21 September, and from there flew to Moscow where he met with Soviet Premier Joseph Stalin. The meeting was a success, in particular because the two allies reached an agreement concerning the participation of Bulgarian troops in the operation that would be conducted on Yugoslav territory. The offensive Before the start of ground operations, the Soviet 17th Air Army 3rd Ukrainian Front was ordered to impede the withdrawal of German troops from Greece and southern regions of Yugoslavia. To do so, it carried out air attacks on the railroad bridges and other important facilities in the areas of Nys, Skopje, and Krusovo lasting from 15 to 21 September. Topic. Plan of the offensive It was necessary for the Yugoslavs to break through German defensive positions on the Yugoslav-Bulgarian border to gain control of roads and mountain passages through eastern Serbia, to penetrate into the valley of the Great Morava River, and to secure the bridgehead on the western bank. This task was to be executed mainly by the 57th Army, and the Yugoslav 14th Army Corps was ordered to cooperate and support the Red Army attack behind the front line. After the successful completion of the first stage, the plan was to deploy the 4th Guards Mechanized Corps to the bridgehead on the West Bank. This corps, with its tanks, heavy weapons, and impressive firepower, was compatible with the Yugoslav 1st Army Group, which had significant, concentrated manpower, but was armed mainly with light infantry weapons. Once joined, these two formations were ordered to execute the main attack on Belgrade from the south. The advantages of this plan were the possibility of the rapid deployment of forces in the critical final stage of the offensive, and the possibility of cutting off German troops in eastern Serbia from their main forces. Topic. First stage 
Topic: Local situation. In January 1944, partisan operational units left the northern part of East Serbia under pressure from occupiers and auxiliary forces. Bulgarian garrisons, some German police forces, and Serbian Quisling troops, all under German command, and Chetniks, mostly commanded by agreements with the Germans, remained in the area. Partisan forces made up of the 23rd and 25th Divisions returned to the central parts of East Serbia in July and August 1944, forming a free territory with a makeshift runway in Soko Banja, thus securing both air supply of arms and ammunition, and allowing evacuation of the wounded. After the coup in Romania, the importance of the northern part of East Serbia had grown for both sides. In a race against each other the partisans were better positioned and faster. 23rd Division, in a fierce battle with German police battalions and auxiliary forces, took Zayachar on 7 September, and on 12 September entered Nagoshin, while the 25th Division unsuccessfully attacked Donji Milanovic at the same time. Volunteers were joining the units in large numbers increasing their size. A new, 45th Serbian Division was formed on 3 September, and on 6 September 14 Corps headquarters was established as a high command for the area of operations. The Germans intervened with the 1st Mountain Division, reaching Zayachar on 9 September. Over the next week partisans launched defensive attacks trying to deny the Germans access to the Danube at Nagoshin. On 16 September, when Red Army forces did not cross over from Romania as expected, the 14th Corps decided to abandon its defense of the Danube coastline, and to focus on attacking German columns maneuvering elsewhere. On 12 September, near Negotian, a NOVJ delegation led by Colonel Lubodrag Durek crossed the Danube to the Romanian side, and established contact with the Red Army 74th Rifle Division. The delegation was accompanied to Romanian territory by the 1st Battalion of the 9th Serbian Brigade. The 1st Battalion would fight with the 109th Regiment of 74th Rifle Division until 7 October. In August 1944, Army Group F Commander Feldmarschall Maximilian von Weichs ordered the concentration of his mobile forces in Serbia to combat the partisans. This included, the 4th SS Police Division, the 1st Mountain Division, the 92nd Motorized Regiment, the 4th Brandenburg Regiment, the 191st Assault Brigade, and the 486th Armored Reconnaissance Troop. As a countermeasure to the events in Romania and Bulgaria, he ordered the 11th Luftwaffe Field Division, the 22nd Infantry, the 117th, the 104th Jaeger Division, and the 18th SS Mountain Police Regiment to advance to Macedonia. The 1st Mountain Division was withdrawn from operations against partisans in Montenegro, and was transported to the Nice area. On 6 September, it was placed under the command of General Hans Felber, tasked with establishing control on the Bulgarian border. By mid-September, the division won control of Zayachar and reached the Danube, at the area where the main attack was expected. The 7th SS Division under the command of the 2nd Panzer Army, attacked partisan units moving to Serbia from eastern Bosnia and Sanzik. This division was subordinated to General Felber on 21 September, with the intention of launching an offensive against the partisans in western Serbia. However, due to the deteriorating situation on the eastern border, this offensive was cancelled. Beginning at the end of September, the division was transferred to southeast Serbia, to guard the southern part of the Serbian frontline between Zayachar and Vranja. This enabled the 1st Mountain Division to concentrate on the north, in the area between Zayachar and Iron Gates. The 1st Mountain Division was strengthened by the 92 Motorized Regiment, the 2nd Brandenburg, and the 18th SS Mountain Police Regiment. Both divisions added men from sections of German units withdrawn from Romania, and Bulgaria, as well as from local formations. On the 22nd of September, the 1st Mountain Division mounted an attack on the left bank of the Danube in order to gain control of the Iron Gates, but the plan failed when the 75th Corps of the Red Army, advancing in the opposite direction, launched an attack on the division. Topic. Attack of the 57th Army After the Iasi Kishinev operation, a wide and deep area of possible advancement opened up in front of the Red Army. This started a race between the Soviets and the Germans to the Blue Line, an intended front line running from the southern slopes of the Carpathians over the Iron Gates down the Yugoslav-Bulgarian border. 
By the end of September, both the 2nd and the 3rd Ukrainian Front managed to deploy some 19 rifle divisions with supporting units to the line compared to 91 rifle divisions in the IAC Kishinev operation. Fast terrain with poor and damaged roads, uncertainty over local forces, and logistical difficulties dispersed the German groups and slowed down their advancement. On the other side, Army Group F encountered much larger problems in concentrating their forces. This resulted in the Red Army achieving substantial superiority in numbers on the Blue Line by the end of September. Given this fact, and the prospect of cooperation with NOVJ, the offensive was launched. First to reach the Iron Gates area were reconnaissance elements of the 75th Rifle Corps. On 12 September, they established contact with the partisans on the other side of the Danube. However, in the following days, the Germans succeeded in pushing out the partisans from the river bank, and launched a limited attack on Red Army elements across the Danube. According to the general plan, the 75th Corps was to be included in the composition of the 57th Army during its attack south of the Danube, and the completion of the 57th Army transfer to the Vidin area was not expected before 30 September. Having a fluid situation on the Yugoslav side of the Iron Gates, and a German attack across the Danube, 75th Corps launched its attack earlier, crossing the Danube on of September. After initial success, in the next days, the German 1st Mountain Division undertook a vigorous counterattack, pushing the Soviets back to the shores of the Danube. Because of this, the 57th Army attack was launched on 27 and 28 September with troops brought in overnight. Divisions of the 68th and the 64th Rifle Corps were introduced to the area from Nagoshin to Zayachar. This attack by three army corps allowed the Red Army to gain supremacy on the combat line and to advance in spite of the stubborn German defense. On 30 September, Nagoshin was liberated and heavy fighting erupted in Zayachar. Army Group F Command in Belgrade sought to bring more units to Belgrade as soon as possible. Commander-in-Chief Maximilian von Weichs ordered the 104th Jaeger Division to be transported immediately as soon as transport of the 117th Jaeger Division was completed. However, transport from the south was hindered by partisan operations and Allied Air Force attacks. The 117th Jaeger Division had been boarded on 44 trains in Athens on 19 September, but only 17 of them had reached Belgrade by 8 October. The 104th Jaeger Division remained blocked in Macedonia. Because of the lack of troops at the front line, on 29 September, Army Group F Command ordered a defensive assault by the 1st Mountain Division and the 92nd Motorized Brigade in an attempt to buy time. Assault Regiment Rhodes was transported to Belgrade by air without heavy weapons, but this method of transport could not meet the Army's needs. The attack on the German forces by three Soviet rifle corps, supported by the 14th Corps NOVJ, stretched between Donji Milanovic and Zayachar, gradually progressed, despite persistent resistance. The fight broke down into a number of skirmishes for the strong points in towns and on the crossroads and passes, and the Germans were forced to withdraw gradually. The 14th Corps NOVJ won control over communications behind the front line, and the commander of the 57th Army sent his chief of staff Major General Verkulovich Russian, Verhulovich to the 14th Corps headquarters to coordinate actions. On 1 October, after a fierce battle, the 223rd Division of the 68th Corps seized an important crossroad in the village of Ergatina, 10 km to the north of Zayachar. Another important crossroad in Stuik fell on 2 October after a bitter battle. On 3 October, parts of the 223rd Division and the 7th and 9th Serbian Brigade of the 23rd Division NOVJ liberated Bor, important for its large copper mine. In Bor the 7th and 9th Brigade liberated some 1,700 forced laborers, mostly Jews from Hungary, because of successful attacks. By 4 October, German forces in front of the Soviet 57th Army were separated into three battle groups with no contact with each other. Battle Group Groth holding Zayachar was the southernmost, Battle Group Fischer held positions in the middle, and Battle Group Stettner named after the 1st Mountain Division commander held grounds in mountains further to the north. Having firm control of the crossroads in their area, Soviet command decided to postpone a decisive attack on the German battle groups and to exploit the open roads with mobile forces for deeper penetration. On 7 October, the 5th Guards Motorized Rifle Brigade, reinforced with a self-propelled artillery regiment and an anti-tank regiment, marched from Nagoshin over Ergatina and Zagubica to Svilinac. 
In 24 hours the brigade performed a 120 km long march maneuver, reaching the Great Morava Valley on 8 October, leaving German frontline forces far behind. The next day, 9 October, the 93rd Rifle Division broke into the Great Morava Valley through Petrovac. The division commander formed a special task force under Captain Liskov, to capture the only 30-ton bridge over the river near the village of Donye Lividais. Captain Liskov's group successfully neutralized German guards and prevented them from mining the bridge which held great importance for the remaining course of the offensive. On 10 October, the 93rd Rifle Division and the 5th Motorized Brigade secured the bridgehead on the west bank of the Great Morava River. On 7 October 64, Rifle Corps units, together with elements of 45th Division NOVJ, finally managed to break the steadfast resistance of Battle Group Groth and took Zayachar. At the same time, owing to great efforts by engineering units, the 4th Guard's mechanized corps transports reached the Vidin area. On 9 October, the Corps moved through Zayachar heading to the bridge over the Great Morava. After crossing the bridge, on 12 October, in the area of Natalanchi, 12 km east of Topola, the Corps met the 4th Brigade of the 21st Serbian Division NOVJ. The 4th Guard's mechanized corps, with its 160 tanks, 21 self-propelled guns, 31 armored cars, and 366 guns and mortars, had impressive firepower. Together with the Yugoslav 1st Proletarian Corps concentrated in the area, the 4th Guard's mechanized corps formed the main attack force for the direct assault on Belgrade. With this concentration of forces in the area west of Great Morava, the first phase of the offensive was successfully concluded. Topic. Second stage Topic. German countermeasures On 2 October, the German command structure was reorganized and General Friedrich Wilhelm Müller, former commander of German forces on Crete, resumed command over the front line south of the Danube. His corps headquarters was located in Kraljevo. General Wilhelm Schneckenberger retained command of the forces north of the Danube and was tasked with the immediate defense of Belgrade. Both corps commands were subordinated to General Felber's Army Detachment Serbia Command, under Commander-in-Chief, Southeast Army Group F High Command. As Belgrade became a more unstable combat zone, on 5 October, Army Group F headquarters was relocated from Belgrade to Vukovar. Felber and Schneckenberger remained in Belgrade. On 10 October, Army Group F Command acknowledged that the Red Army had opened a hole in their front line and had penetrated the Great Morava Valley. These Soviet forces threatened to proceed with a direct attack on Belgrade, cutting off the 1st Mountain Division, still stuck in combat in East Serbia, and to attack it from the rear. German command stated its determination to close the hole with a counterattack, but lacked troops for such an undertaking. With the impossibility of reinforcements coming from the south finally acknowledged, German command was forced to seek more troops from 2nd Panzer Army. Previous deployment of forces to the front line in Serbia had already cost 2nd Panzer Army the loss of a number of important towns, some permanently, Dravar, Gako, Prigidor, Jace, Donji Vikuf, Bugajno, Gornji Vikuf, Tuzla, Havar, Brak, Peljasak, Bahrain, Niksik, Baleka, Trebinje, Benkovac, Livno, and some temporarily, Uzis, Tasanj, Teslik, Slavinska Pazega, Zvornik, Daruvar, Pakrak, Kolosin, Bajelo Polj, Banja Luka, Plyavla, Verovita. Visegrad, and Travnik. A new defensive plan, put into operation on 10 October, allowed the 2nd Panzer Army to abandon most of the Adriatic coast, and to form a new defensive line from the mouth of Zr Manja eastwards, relying on mountain ranges and fortified towns. This defensive line was to be held with three legionnaire divisions the 369th, the 373rd and the 392nd, and it was to allow Germans to draw out two divisions the 118th and the 264th for use in critical areas. However, due to the failure of the 369th Division, only two battalion strong battle groups of the 118th Division were sent to Belgrade, while the 264th was caught in the offensive of the 8th Yugoslav Corps, and was eventually destroyed in the Nin area. Topic. Activities on the flanks Operations began on the far southern flank of the front with an offensive by the 2nd Bulgarian Army into the Leskovicnese area, which almost immediately engaged the infamous 7th SS Mountain Division, Prince Eugen. 
Two days later, having encountered the Yugoslav partisans, the army with partisan participation defeated a combined force of Chetniks and Serbian frontier guards and occupied Vlasotinsk. Using its armoured brigade as a spearhead, the Bulgarian army then engaged German positions on 8 October at Bela Polanka, reaching Vlasotinsk two days later. On 12 October, the armoured brigade, supported by the 15th Brigade of the 47th Partisan Division, was able to take Leskovic, with the Bulgarian reconnaissance battalion crossing the Morava and probing toward Nys. The goal of this was to not so much to pursue the remnants of the Prince Eugen division withdrawing northwest, but for the Bulgarian 2nd Army to begin the liberation of Kosovo which would have finally cut the route north for the German Army Group E withdrawing from Greece. On 17 October, the leading units of the Bulgarian army reached Kursumlija, and proceeded to Kursumlij Skabanya. On 5 November, after negotiating the Prepolak Pass with heavy losses, the brigade occupied Padujevo, but was unable to reach Pristina until 21. On the northern face of the offensive, the Red Army 2nd Ukrainian Front supporting 46th Army advanced in an attempt to outflank the German Belgrade defensive position from the north, by cutting the river and rail supply lines running along the Tisa. Supported by the 5th Air Army, its 10th Guards Rifle Corps was able to rapidly perform assault crossings of the rivers Tamiz and Tisa north of Panchevo to threaten the Belgrade Novi Sad Railroad. Further to the north the Red Army 31st Guards Rifle Corps advanced toward Petrovgrad, and the 37th Rifle Corps advanced toward, and crossed the Tisa to threaten the stretch of railway between Novi Sad and Sabatica, and to prepare for the planned Budapest strategic offensive operation. Topic. Assault on Belgrade Topic. Approaching Belgrade On 12 October, of the whole area between Kragujevac and Sava, with the exception of Belgrade, the Germans held only solitary strongholds in Sabak, Abrenovac, Topola and Mladenovac, while the areas in between were under the control of NOVJ. After the liberation of Vilyeva, divisions of the 12th Corps, and the 6th Division, and scattered Chetniks, pushed back German battle group von Jungenfeld south of Sabak, and entered the area between Belgrade and Abrenovac. Chetnik elements that had retreated to Belgrade were transported to Kraljevo by the Germans on 3–5 October. 1st and 5th Division held Topola and Mladenovac under pressure, and were reinforced by the 21st Division, which marched in from the south. On that day, all of the 4th Guards Mechanized Corps was concentrated to the west of Topola. The Germans formed two combat groups to defend against an attack intended to force them back across the Great Morava. The attack of the southern combat group from Kragujevac was easily blocked, and the northern battle group was dealt with by the Corps along its advancement towards Belgrade. The main direction of attack, along a line between Topola and Belgrade, was entrusted to the 36th Tank Brigade, the 13th and 14th Guards Mechanized Brigade of Red Army, and to the 1st, 5th, and 21st Division NOVJ. The task of penetrating the line in an additional direction, on the right flank, towards the Danube and Smetarevo, was given to the 15th Guards Mechanized Brigade, reinforced by the 5th Independent Mechanized Brigade, two artillery regiments, and the 1st Brigade of 5th Division NOVJ. The final run towards Belgrade started on 12 October. An auxiliary right flank attack on the 15th Guards Mechanized Brigade, and the 1st Brigade of 5th Division, allowed NOVJ to reach the Danube near Bolik late in the evening of 13 October, after a charge through the positions of the Brandenburgers. With this success, German forces were split into two separate groups, the Belgrade garrison to the west, and the battle group retreating from eastern Serbia, which was then in the Smetarevo area. The latter, consisting of the 1st Mountain Division, the 2nd Brandenburg Regiment, and elements of other units, under General Walter Stettner, was cut off from all other German units, and faced destruction. Efforts by this group to break through and to establish a link with the Belgrade garrison resulted in fierce fighting. In the following days, the 21st and 23 Division NOVJ were deployed to strengthen positions and to prevent the Germans from reuniting. The 36th Tank Brigade led an attack in the main direction. With the 4th Battalion of the 4th Serbian Brigade boarded on tanks, the 36th headed towards Topola. Parts of the 5th Division NOVJ 10th Krina Brigade were attacking the Topola garrison from the west when tanks of 36th Tank Brigade suddenly appeared from the east. After a short but intense artillery bombardment, the German garrison was overrun with a joint charge. 
The 36th Tank Brigade continued northwards without delay, and 9 km north of Topola encountered a German assault gun battalion marching in the opposite direction. After a short but fierce clash, with serious losses on both sides, the 36th Tank Brigade overran the Germans on the move, and proceeded to the north. Before 12 October was over, with the assistance of the 3rd and 4th Kreina Brigade NOVJ, the 36th Tank Brigade also overran the garrison at Mladenovac, the last important obstacle before Belgrade, in a manner similar to the action at Topola. With Mladenovac cleared, the way to Belgrade was wide open. Topic. On the streets of Belgrade The 4th Guard's mechanized corps of the Red Army and the Yugoslav 12th Corps broke through the enemy resistance south of Belgrade on 14 October, and approached the city. The Yugoslavs advanced along the roads in the direction of Belgrade south of the Sava River, while the Red Army engaged in fighting on the northern bank outskirts. The assault on the city was delayed due to the diversion of forces for the elimination of thousands of German troops surrounded between Belgrade and Smederevo to the southeast. On 20 October, Belgrade had been completely overrun by joint Soviet and Yugoslav forces. The Yugoslav 13th Corps, in cooperation with the Bulgarian 2nd Army, advanced from the southeast. They were responsible for the area of Nis and Leskovic. They were also responsible for cutting off the main evacuation route of Army Group E along the South Morava and Morava rivers. Army Group E was forced to retreat through the mountains of Montenegro and Bosnia and was unable to reinforce German units in Hungary. The Soviet 10th Guards Rifle Corps of the 46th Army 2nd Ukrainian Front, together with units of the Yugoslav partisans moving via the Danube, provided more offensive strength from the northeast against the Wehrmacht's position in Belgrade. They cleared the left bank of the Tisa and Danube in Yugoslavia and took the town of Panchevo. Topic. Allied forces Participating in the assault on the capital of Yugoslavia were topic. Soviet Union Third Ukrainian Front Fourth Guards Mechanized Corps General Lieutenant TV Zhdanov Vladimir Ivanovich Thirteenth Guards Mechanized Brigade Lieutenant Colonel Obater of Gennady Ivanovich Fourteenth Guards Mechanized Brigade Colonel Nikitin Nikodemius Alekievich Fifteenth Guards Mechanized Brigade Lieutenant Colonel Andrianov Mikhail Alekievich Thirty-sixth Guards Tank Brigade Colonel Zhukov Peter Semenovich 292nd Guards Self-Propelled Artillery Regiment Lieutenant Colonel Shokhmedov Seaman Kondratovich 352nd Guards Heavy Self-Propelled Artillery Regiment Colonel Tiburkov Ivan Markovich 5th Guards Motor Rifle Brigade Colonel Zavyalov Nikolai Ivanovich 23rd Howitzer Artillery Brigade Colonel Karpenko Sava Kirilovich of the 9th Breakthrough Artillery Division Major General Art Radiv Andrei Ivanovich 42nd Anti-Tank Destroyer Artillery Brigade Colonel Leonov Konstantin Alekievich 22nd Anti-Aircraft Artillery Division Colonel Danshin Igor Mikhailovich 57th Army 75th Rifle Corps Major General Akimenko Andrian Zakharovich 223rd Rifle Division Colonel Sajitov Aknov Gainatdinovich 236th Rifle Division Colonel Kuliski Peter Ivanovich 68th Rifle Corps Major General Shkodunovich Nikolai Nikolaevich 73rd Guards Rifle Division Major General Kozik Seaman Antonovich Danube Military Flotilla Brigade of Armored Boats Captain 2nd Rank Dershaven Pavel Ivanovich 1st Guards Armored Boats Division Lieutenant Commander Barbatko Sergei Ignatevich 4th Guards Armored Boats Division Senior Lieutenant Butvin Kuzma Iosifovich Coastal Escort Force Major ZIDR Clementi Timofievich 17th Air Army 10th Assault Air Corps Lieutenant General of Aviation Tolstyakov Oleg Viktorovich 295th Fighter Air Division Colonel Silvestrov Anatoly Alexandrovich 306th Assault Air Division Colonel Ivanov Alexander Viktorovich 136th Assault Air Division Part Colonel Terakov Nikolai Pavlovich 10th Guards Assault Air Division Major General of Aviation Vitruk Andrei Nikifarovich 
236th Fighter Air Division Colonel Kadrashov Vasily Yakovlevich 288th Fighter Air Division Part Colonel Smirnov Boris Alexandrovich Topic Yugoslavia First Army Group General Lieutenant Colonel Piko Dapchevich First Proletarian Division Colonel Vazo Yovanovic 6th Proletarian Division Colonel Doko Jovanic 5th Assault Division Colonel Militan Moraka 21st Assault Division Colonel Miloye Milojevic 12th Army Corps General Lieutenant Colonel Danilo Lekic 11th Assault Division Colonel Milos Siljegovic 16th Assault Division Colonel Marko Parison 28th Assault Division Lieutenant Colonel Radahika Nenezic 36th Assault Division Lieutenant Colonel Radoslav Jovic Topic Bulgaria First Army Bulgaria by the end of the September the First Army together with the Bulgarian 2nd 3rd and elements of the 4th Armies was in full scale combat against the German army along the Bulgaria Yugoslavia border with Yugoslavian guerrillas on their left flank and a Soviet force on their right they consisted of around 340,000 men by December 1944 the First Army numbered 100,000 men the First Army took part in the Bulgarian Army's advance northwards into the Balkan Peninsula with logistical support and under the command of the Red Army. The First Army, advanced into Serbia, Hungary and Austria in the spring of 1945, despite heavy casualties and bad conditions in the winter. During 1944–45, the Bulgarian First Army was commanded by Lieutenant General Vladimir Stachev. Aftermath. Upon completion of the Belgrade operation by the 57th Army with the Yugoslav 51st Division in November, the bridgehead in Baranja, on the left bank of Danube was taken, causing an acute crisis for the German defence. The bridgehead served as a platform for the massive concentration of the 3rd Ukrainian Front troops for the Budapest Offensive. The Red Army 68th Rifle Corps participated in the battles on the Kraljevo bridgehead and the Sirmian Front until mid-December, and were then transferred to Baranja. The Red Army Air Force Group Vitruk, provided air support on the Yugoslav front until the end of December. The Yugoslav First Army Group continued to push German forces westwards for some 100 km through SREM, where the Germans managed to stabilize a front in mid-December. Having lost Belgrade and the Great Morava Valley, German Army Group E was forced to fight for a passage through the mountains of Sanzik and Bosnia, and its first echelons did not reach Drava until mid-February 1945. A medal for the liberation of Belgrade was established by a decree of the Presidium of the Supreme Soviet on 19 June 1945. Topic see also World War II in Yugoslavia 7 Anti-Partisan Offensives Lothar Rendelik Resistance During World War II Topic References Topic Sources Biryusev, Sergei Semenovich, Homovic, Raid Beogradskaoperacija. Biograd, Vojny Istoriski Institut Jugoslavenski Narodny Armij. Dudarenko, M. L., Perechnev, U., G., Yelisev, V. T., et. L., Reference Guide Liberation of Cities, Reference for Liberation of Cities During the Period of the Great Patriotic War 1941–1945, Moscow, 1985 Glance, David, 1986 Art of War Symposium, From the Vistula to the Odor, Soviet Offensive Operations, October 1944 – March 1945, A Transcript of Proceedings, Center for Land Warfare, U.S. Army War College, 19-23 May 1986 Glance, David M. and House, Jonathan 1995, When Titans Clashed, How the Red Army Stopped Hitler, Lawrence, Kansas, University Press of Kansas, ISBN 0-7006-0899-0. Krivoshev, Grigory Fedotovich Soviet Casualties and Combat Losses in the Twentieth Century. Greenhill Books. McLean, Fitzroy Eastern Approaches. Penguin Group. Seton, Albert, The Fall of Fortress Europe 1943-1945, B.T. Batsford Limited, London, 1981 ISBN 0-7134-1968-7 Schmeider, Klaus 2002. 
Partisanenkrieg in Jugoslawien 1941–1944. Hamburg, Berlin, Bonn, Verlag E.S. Mittler and Son GmbH. ISBN 3-8132-0794-3. Tomasevich, Jozo War and Revolution in Yugoslavia, 1941–1945. Stanford, Stanford University Press. ISBN 0-8047-0857-6. Depay, Ernest R., and Depay, Trevor N., The Encyclopedia of Military History from 3500 BC to the Present Revised Edition, Jane's Publishing Company, London, 1980 Mitrovsky, Boro, Venceslav Glisic and Tomo Rostovsky, The Bulgarian Army in Yugoslavia 1941–1945 Belgrade, Madunarodna Politica, 1971 Wilmot, Chester, The Struggle for Europe, Collins, 1952 Grechko, A.A., ed., Liberation Mission of the Soviet Armed Forces in the Second World War, Progress Publishers, Moscow, 1975 Topic Further reading My Storvich, Vojin. The Red Army in Yugoslavia, 1944–1945. Slavic Review. 75 396–421. doi, 10.5612, Slavic Review, 75.2.396.